Can you tell us more about the film, please? Okay, so uh, the story of My Nazi Legacy is um, Philippe here um, embarking on a relationship with two men, who, uh, both of whose fathers were very senior Nazis. Uh, and not only that, but they were uh, responsible for the um, uh, extermination of the Jewish community in the, part of, uh, in the part of what is now Ukraine, from which Philippe's family come. So there's an extremely keen uh, personal intensity to their relationship, which is nevertheless really, really friendly. So it's, it becomes a kind of weird road movie with these two, you know, elderly German guys and this sprightly young uh, North London Jewish guy going through essentially the, the Nazi killing fields of Ukraine, maintaining their friendship, but at the same time really wrestling with what it means to be the next generation on from a historical event that's so cataclysmic that it still resonates today. So for you as, as an actor then, being able to get your teeth into something like this is a very sensitive subject but yet very exciting to bring something like this to a new generation that may not know about it. Yeah, it is exciting. It started with an article in the Financial Times magazine, led to a dinner party conversation with my dear friend David Evans, a wonderful director, and we decided we would turn it into uh, a film and we got great help from Wild Gaze uh, and BBC Storyville. It started as a labour of love, it got a lot of investments uh, and we went off, as David said, on a, on, a, on, a, on a road trip across Europe and three of us uh, creating a triangular relationship and they weren't just any Nazis, I mean dear Nicholas's father was Hitler's personal lawyer so you're talking about people who were at the heart uh, of a regime and the insights and the family home movies from these guys are truly incredible. And what Philippe's being too modest to, to tell you is that he, he is himself uh, an eminent international lawyer uh, who uh, works in the field that effectively was developed, if not originated, at the Nuremberg Trials, which w at which one of these two men was was convicted and subsequently um, uh, uh, executed. So there's there's a there's a sense of real uh, insight and depth that you get from watching the film into the issues that underlie the the legal the legal situation, what genocide actually means, what crimes against humanity actually mean. It, on this journey, have you found something that you know that there are sho there are shocking crimes, but there was something that it was even more deplorable that you couldn't even imagine? Uh, well, I mean, there are a couple of things. Firstly, we end up towards the end of the film standing in a very large field in the Ukraine with a large number of men dressed up wearing Waffen SS uniforms celebrating the Nazi period. So it's the resonance today which in a sense is even more powerful than the story that we tell. But I think the more complex story, and for me the more interesting story even, is what it means to have a father uh, who was a mass murderer. And you've got two men. Uh, one thinks his father was a criminal, the other thinks his dad was a great guy. And it's about that relationship. It's very, very interesting. And for you, was there anything that was shocking, really? Well, to be honest, what I learned, and it was a hard lesson for me to learn, was how easy it is now uh, in the world that we all live in to fall back on very easy attitudes of condemning evil in others and particularly going to Ukraine and understanding the uh, predicament of um, native Ukrainians who suffered terribly at the hands of the Soviet army and how their moral position is so compromised when you're confronted with the decision whether to take up arms against the Soviet uh, Union but only you can only do that by joining the regiment of the of the Waffen-SS it just really made me grow up a bit 